with our um, looking at some future projects on the facility uh, plans. And so um, tonight I'm just going to give you an overall update. And then I really want to focus on some issues with elementary schools that then we'll come back to board later with, uh, with some particular and more specific options. But um, so far today, 29 buildings have been completed. We have Firestone and Litchfield um, under construction. I know out in the community there's been some confusion about what's actually going on at Firestone. The new building will house both a Litchfield Middle School and a Firestone High School CLC. Litchfield is currently attending the old Perkins building, so when the building is done, Litchfield and Firestone will move into their respective wings and then the old Firestone will be torn down with the exception of the um, swimming pool, the natatorium, and then we'll put our multi-purpose fields on the site where the old building currently sits. Um, with today's approval of the contracts at Joint Board and here for Harris, we'll get started with uh, early construction and then uh, we just started uh, prior to the holiday, the uh, POR phases for Case and Ellett School. So those are the next buildings that are in the hopper for probably a year, year and a half of design, and then um, going through design development and uh, hopefully a bid. So a uh, total of 42 buildings. There are seven that will remain that I'll go over uh, in a, a little bit. Original scope, though, was uh, 58 buildings uh, back in 2002 when we came up with that master plan. So again, this is a repeat of some information I provided to you before in terms of factors we consider, the feasibility of a project, you know, an enrollment, uh, trends and the stability of enrollment at a building. So that will really help us uh, look at the future in terms of the remaining buildings, what's actually doable, and more importantly, the availabil availability of funds. Um, I'm sorry about that typo on, in terms of in the percentage of state participation. <laughs> Uh, the, this is probably the most important chart uh, for us because it actually represents the red line for each of our segments. Uh, you know, the master plan, we had the original master plan and then it was divided into segments. And so segment five, Mr. Flesher, includes Ellett and Case. And Margaret Park. And Margaret Park's demolition. Thank you. So our historical enrollment is in red and you can see when we first started, um, we were at about, with the original master plan, 29,251 students and down uh, even lower than the 21,568 um, as of uh, when we put together the segment five projection in the fall. Our uh, commission enrollment based on the population projections completed by DeYoung when we first started with the initial master plan, it projected that we would be at 30,617 in terms of students, and that would mean that's what we were designing for. And right now, with the current uh, design enrollment, we're down to 19,452, and that's for a build-out year of 2020-21, if I'm not mistaken. And then you see the blue line represents our square footage cost for the projects from the initial master plan and then all the way through what it is today with uh, segment number five. So in short, our population continued to decrease and our square footage cost per building have steadily increased. In terms of those seven remaining projects I mentioned, they're Garfield, Kenmore, North High Schools, Kent Middle School, Miller South, uh, Bettis, Firestone Park, and Piper. Um, at my last report to the board, there are a couple of buildings uh, which house um, specialty programs, uh, such as our uh, uh, program at uh, uh, Barrett, where we put move some uh, programs from juvenile, uh, from the YMCA, and we have juvenile court there, uh, and we have a couple of other programs, like we put Essex back to use for the early learning program, and then our Bridges Academy, which is at the old Hotchkiss building, and then we have some alternative programming at Reedinger. I didn't put them on here because they were really outside of the master plan. 
So when we look at approving the uh, process of having Ellett and Case move forward and demolishing Margaret Park, the commission's whole program is based on students. And so when you look at what we've constructed and what we have planned all the way through segment five, including Case and Ellett, our remaining students after those buildings are complete, we have no K through five students left. We have 28 grades six through eight students left. 896 for grades 9 through 12 and 330 those are career tech students which will go into a high school so there's a total of 1254 students that the commission will partner with us on in funding what they're saying is based on our square footage and based what we've built so far and based on the students that we're projected to have um, that 2020-21 build-out year, they will partner with us on 1,254 students. And today I just want to talk, of, my focus is really on those elementary projects because according to the commission, we have a big goose egg up there of zero. And I have several buildings that we really do need to build. So when I look at the elementary schools, I've listed their names and the numbers in parentheses. Next to them is their current enrollment. Remember, the commission basically will have a minimum requirement of 350 kids to partner on a project. That's really irrelevant to us now because we have, according to the commission, zero students left to fund. But Bettis has 207 students, so even if we did have students that were fundable, we'd have to increase its enrollment. Firestone Park has 415. Uh, students, Pfeiffer 152, Smith 119, and Lawndale 135. So with Bettis, I think we need to review its long-term enrollment uh, as a standalone as a standalone building or consider a merger into another building. So with uh, that, we would have to look at um, the other schools on the north side of Akron, which would include Forest Hill. Uh, potentially include Harris uh, once it's rebuilt. Uh, we'll have to just take a look at that. Uh, Firestone Park, uh, when you look at the other buildings, there isn't a whole lot of room for, for additions, and Firestone Park's already at 415. Um, that one, we probably will have to look at a renovation add or a complete replacement, uh, swinging them out of Firestone Park uh, to 400 West Market. And then in Kenmore, we have Pfeiffer, Smith, and Lawndale. The problem there is all three are under 350. You could combine them into one school, which would be about 406 students. But again, with uh, zero students available for elementaries, we may need to look at, um, instead of building a new uh, building on one of the sites, like the Pfeiffer site, we may want to look at repurposing a current building uh, modify its programming and then consolidate the three buildings into one. That would pose some issues with transportation, but those are the things that we will be looking at and then give a report back uh, to the board. So again, um, right now I want, really want to kind of focus on the elementary buildings and uh, get some solutions, potential solutions for those uh, in terms of how we would fund them. Uh, we're, right now, we will be looking at locally funded dollars to do that. I have to then balance it with the balance, you know, with the other projects that are out there, such as uh, our three high schools, Kent and Miller South. And so, um, what we'll do is come back um, with some proposals for these, and then as we get additional information, come back with proposals for the high schools. What we'll do is we'll do the elementaries first, give you some proposals, come back and look at um, our high schools and then the, the two middle schools and um, determine how we uh, foresee paying for those or whether those are gonna be um, you know, partnership schools with some other entity to bring some dollars to the table. And then again, um, look at where enrollment sits. I would say Kenmore, that cluster probably offers a good potential for some consolidation because if I remember the charts correctly, 
uh, Kenmore's high school population is down to a little over 600. It's less than 700. And then Ennis Middle School, if I'm not mistaken, is down near 300, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Those probably should be combined into maybe a 7 through 12 or a 6 through 12. But again, we'll have to look at the the uh, finances and we're also working with the commission in terms of what they will fund and how they're going to look at some of these numbers um, it, you know in terms of how we're going to allocate the last remaining students in the project so that's really what i have for you today again the next part of this will be coming back with maybe some more concrete proposals for how do we handle our uh, elementary schools and again if you look at uh, Bettis at 207, you look at Firestone Park at 415, you look at the combined uh, Kenmore elementaries that remain with uh, 406 students, we have a lot of work to do, um, you know, just to figure out where they're going to go. I really don't see um, us getting away from doing Firestone Park. Uh, we'll look at the numbers in the other schools, but I don't think they will all fit. Um, at Bettis uh, with 207, and as the longer we take, our enrollment isn't projected right now to increase, so they're under pressure, as well as the three elementary schools in Kenmore. Are there any questions? Yes, Reverend Walker. Kenmore, um, <clears throat> we don't have any money from the state to build a new building. If we decided to build a new building to incorporate all three of those no, elementary schools right no there's um kenmore with the the issue that we've had with the commission has been they didn't think kenmore was eligible for replacement because they thought the condition was uh too nice it didn't meet the two-thirds right. rule but now it does if i'm not mistaken so it could be uh, replaced and they would participate if we chose that particular building or a portion a certain number of those high school students that are available to a building like Kenmore. Mm -hmm. There would be some issues with middle school because yeah. remember, we built in us. Right. So those are some things we have to look at. But, um, but the elementary, as if we were able to build an elementary, that would be all of our Yes, that would be funded, all locally funded locally initiative funded money. money. Um, now, you presented this to us, and the public is going to be seeing this at right. some point. Will we be meeting with yes. those three schools? Because I'm concerned with, I know some of the concerns there is a constituency there that uh, if you close one building, we're going to leave. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I want to figure out how we can keep those in Akron Public Schools because right. we're already seeing a downward spiral of losing students so however we are going to roll this out right um we want to be leading the train and not trying exactly. to catch up to the train and i think the important thing to remember to my friends at the table is that we haven't made any no one's closing right now we haven't made any decisions right. about that we're just right. talking it's about the reality of these low enrollment buildings and how are we going to look at um either not being able to replace them or making some changes so that they can take part in new facilities uh, that the rest of the district's elementary students are partaking in. So that's, there's a lot more work that has to be done. Would you just happen to have on the top of your head what uh, Garfield and uh, Roswell Kitt's numbers are? Um, thank you. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the wheel of fortune. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Garfield, we have uh, 758 uh, students, and at let me make sure that's the right color. Yeah, Garfield 758, and Kent is 475. Any other questions? All right, well, we'll be back with, uh, like I said, additional information on um, all of our options and, and, and our work with the city and the uh, Ohio Facilities Construction Commission. So we're apportioning those students. And I think what we're going to have to do is really have some creative partnerships with some folks in order to, um, particularly at the high schools, to make sure we can get through those. Yes, sir. Just a random question. Our estimates 
and their estimates. There's always that gap. And the trend kind of goes like this, and there's about a 2,000 student gap. How often, just out of curiosity, or maybe you know or don't know, have our, what we've actually, the students that we've actually had enrolled in each segment matched or not matched or beat their projections? I mean, because it always seems to be off by about 2,000 students. It is, and the one thing you have to understand is that they look, how many years is it? Five or ten they years. Their projections. Yeah. So their projections are always in the future. And I we actually have them all charted out. So their first projection showed very little change. It was going to be thirty thousand students. And within like two years of starting the project, we had already missed on our actual enrollment. So as they did the second and third iteration of that, those projections that um, the OS, OFCC has done have pretty much matched them more recently in terms of where our actual enrollment is and where their projected enrollment is as they've gotten more experience with looking at our demographics. So they are, they've been, recently they've been pretty close compared to what they did, you know, back at the beginning of the project. All right. Okay, well, thank you.